Hi everyone and welcome back. We have another video that was voted for by my patrons and YouTube members. This month they voted for the grappling hook video. So in this video we're going to show you how to set up a grappling hook for a first person shooter game. So you can swing your way through the levels like Spider-Man. So let's begin. So to get started with our grappling system, uh, we need to first of all go to our player character. And in our character, we're going to set up the inputs to handle the actual grapple itself. And then eventually the tick to handle the movement. So let's go into the project settings and add in a grapple button via inputs. And we're going to add an action mapping in here. And we'll call this one grapple. And this will be the right click for us. Okay. I'm going to close this. And now I can right click and add the grapple event. Okay, so the grapple event is going to do uh, one thing and one thing only, and that is going to be setting a grapple point, and it's going to release the grapple point when we release the key. So the first thing we're going to do is first of all set up the ability to line trace out for a particular location. Now this bit can differ differently greatly on your game design. So for example, in this tutorial, we're going to go through and show you how to do this to any uh, to sorry not to any to a particular object type. So you can only grapple to grapple locations. But you can also do this to work with any object you want as well by simply just doing a line trace. But we'll show it for a actual specific object. So in here we're going to do a line trace for objects. And we're going to do a line trace based upon which way we're currently facing and where we're looking and uh, aiming the gun. So let's get the player camera manager, which is where we're currently facing with the camera. And we're going to get the location of this get the camera location and this could be our starting point the end point is going to be the active forward vector from here which we then multiply by how far we want the range to be so I'm going to multiply this by a float of say 10,000 and we're going to add that offset onto the camera's location to get the end point of our line trace Now, being searching for object types, we do have to search for a particular object type. So let's drag the object types array down and do make array. And in here, we want to create our own custom object type, not using any of these ones, but our own one for this list. So to do that, you go to project settings again, and just search for object, and you'll see in here object channels. Go new object channel, and we call this one grapple point. And the default response for this is going to be ignore. Click accept, and we'll close that. If I compile this now, I should be able to choose my grapple point from the drop down now. If you don't see it there, just make sure you compiled, and it'll be there. Um, and that's all we have to do here. Hit compile, and we're done. So, if this was successful in hitting the grapple point, we want to register and store that location. So, let's first of all check whether or not we are successful with this branch. And we're going to take this out here, here and break it open. And we're breaking it open because we want this location. We want to know where the impact point was for the grapple point. So we're going to promote that impact point there to a variable. And call this one grapple point. Location. And plug that into the true of that branch there. We then want to have a tick on here to enable us to actually grapple and move towards the grappling point. Uh, for that, we need a boolean to flag us whether or not we're grappling or not. So do is grappling as a new boolean variable. And we're going to set that to be true here. So we now know we are grappling. Now for us to be able to actually grapple, we have to tell our player that they're now flying now. So this tells the character movement component to turn off its gravity basically and allows them just to fly through the air. So let's drag out our character movement here and then do set movement mode to our flying movement mode. You're just going through bit by bit the various things we need to do here. And for a visual element, we, we're going to have a cable. Now the cable is going to go from our gun to the grapple point. So we're going to take our viewport here and we're going to add a cable uh, component to this. So let's just add a cable component to our, uh, let's say camera maybe. Add component and do cable. And there it is. 
Now this is going to be not visible at start. So I'm going to go down and turn off uh, visibility after we move it. First of all, let's move it. So I'm going to put it at the end of the gun roughly. Or if you've got like a special animation, you put it at the end of the bone that you wanted to animate. Uh, but that's our one there. We're going to keep that there and can go down to visible and turn off visible. Okay. Um, now with the cable here, we do have to turn on, uh, make sure that attach start and attach end is turned on. Um, everything else you may want to change the look of, if you want to put like a chain sort of material, you can do, put all that all, all in here. Uh, but we're going to keep it a dead straight um, bit of rope. So it's a really taunt piece of rope. And for that, we're going to turn the number of segments down here from 10 to 1. Now make it just a one solid line, basically, towards the player. And the end location, we're going to set to 0, 0, 0 at the start here. And uh, I think that's it. Compile. And let's go back to the event graph. In the event graph here, we're going to make the cable visible at the end here. Set visibility and tick that to be true. Okay, so that is our cable done. So next, we are going to do the release. So if we go back down to the start of our input action grapple and go to release, the very first thing that's gonna happen is that we're gonna turn the is grappling boolean off. So let's turn that off. So we let go of that. We then wanna change the movement mode back to falling. So we have gravity again. So set movement mode of the character movement to falling. Uh, and then we will make the cable not visible anymore. So let's do that. So as you can see, we're basically doing the inverse of what we just done for everything else. So we get the cable, set visibility, and leave that as false. Okay, compile and save that. Okay, so that's our grapple event done. Now we now know our grapple location and whether or not we're actually grappling. So the next bit happens on the tick event. And we're doing it on the tick event because we're constantly applying a force to the player when they are grappling. So the first thing we do is use our boolean is grappling. We're gonna put that in there with a branch. So that way we're not gonna be constantly applying the same force even when we're not grappling. So on true here, the main thing we're doing here is we take the character movement component and we do add force to it. This will add an additional force onto our character. And we're gonna plug that into true. Now comes the calculation part. Make sure we've got enough space. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the actor's location. And we want also the grapple location. And we wanna find the direction between those two points. Okay, we need to find where, which way we're going. So we do direction, and we do get unit direction. Okay, so then we want to get the uh, velocity we want to get from the player character. So at the moment, this is just direction. Now the velocity we're going to use here may be a bit weird, but we're going to use the move right vector. So we're going to get move right, which is the first of all is our input. And this I found just by experimenting. Um, obviously, you can use whatever values you want in here. By means, I recommend you do experiment so you may get a different feel for your grappling hook than, than say, I'm making here. But this is where you'd experiment, these little numbers here. We're going to multiply this vector by the floats there. And then we're going to multiply this again by 0.5. So we double it. No, not double it, um, we halve it. And... We're then going to add that onto our vector there. Okay, so experiment with these numbers if you wish. Um, try different things out, see what it feels like, uh, but that's what you want. So now we've got the direction and we've got the move right vector. Um, this will give us a nice, um, basically, uh, push around. So you like basically you swing around it. Um, and then what we want to do here is normalize this. this uh, vector here. And then we're gonna multiply this by the strength. So this would be how strong is the push on this. And for this, the number I found works quite nice for me uh, is gonna be 300,000. Again, you can tweak this number to your liking to get the exact sort of behavior you wish from your game. So now I'm just gonna plug that into my tick event as the force here. 
So here we get in a different direction. So if we were to hold down right, we're going to get some sort of right movement as well um, applied to it. So we can control sort of the grapple a little bit. Um, if you want more control, just turn this up to closer to one. If you want less control, turn it to closer to zero. And this is the force we're going to apply to our force. Um, that's that bit. We then want to tend, uh, tell the cable to attach its endpoint. Um, so we're going to get the transform of our actor here. And we want to get the grapple location. Now the grapple location here, we want to change from a world point into a local relative point. So to do that, we use the actor transform here to do an inverse transform. And we do inverse transform location. So now we've got a world coordinate into a local coordinate, which is important because the cable needs to know where they're attaching their endpoint. And their endpoint is a relative value. So we do set end location. And we set it to there. Plug that in. Okay. Um, we then want it to maybe let go as soon as we get close enough to it. So what we're looking at doing here is we're going to take the grapple location and we're going to get our location. And we're going to compare the distance between these two. So we get distance and put that in there. And if the distance here is say less than or equal to 100, again, you can tweak this if you wish or omit it completely. Uh, we'll put this into a branch. And this is basically just saying, if we are closer than 100 from our, ourselves to the grapple point location itself, um, we are going to then tell it to basically stop grappling. So here we're going to do is grappling is false. And then we're going to tell our character to stop movement. So character movement here. And we do stop movement immediately. Okay. Um, and that's it. Yeah. So we are okay there. Hit compile and save that. Okay. So now we need to just make our object uh, for our grapple point. So we're going to go to blueprint class actor and call it grapple point. And in here, you can design it visually however you like. Um, but most importantly, you have a collision object, like a sphere collision here. A little bit bigger. And then on the collision settings here, I'm going to change that to custom and then change the object type here to grapple point. And that should block the trace there. Okay, you should hit that and, and should be okay. Um, let's add something visual to it as well. I'm going to add a simple sphere. But obviously, you can use whatever you like if you want to use something visual at all. So let's just drag that into our scene here. There we are, top of this cave. Hit play. And where are we? There we are. There I am. I got grappled up. Oh, uh, I guess there's no collision on the ceiling. <laughs> but there you go. You've got grapple working just fine. Uh, if I could aim, that'd be great. Okay. And we'll put it somewhere else as well. We'll put it up here on these things here. And again, you can size these however you like. So you don't have to put loads in. You just put in one and just scale it up. And uh, you can, and like that movement, I can see like here, I can um, push, this is me holding down the D button. I can spin around and like may pull my way around it. And it just attracts me to it. Um, so yeah, and back up and away we go. And so forth. Now, as I said, it, that's us using grapple points, um, but we can also make it do it for anything. Um, so if I change this line trace here to a line trace by a channel and make it so that the start point and end point are the same, trace channel is visibility. And then I just hook these back into here. So I'm holding down control by the way, if you don't know the shortcut, you hold down control and drag, you can drag pins and move them around. Okay. So if I go into here now. I should be able to grab onto anything and swing my way around like Spider-Man.
there you go usually that's a bit overpowered you don't want to do that um but you never know you may want it in your game uh but that is how you do a grapple system and this feels really nice really intuitive and i say like if you grip the point and launch yourself up to it you let go you'll carry that momentum forwards really nice and it feels really satisfying but there you go And there we go, just like Spider-Man, we can swing our way through our levels at ease with our nice grappling hook with physics. And so you can customise those settings however you wish. Play around with it, see what feels right for you and plays fun for your game. Thanks again for my patrons and YouTube members for their support and for voting for this video. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel for future content. And I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.